do not adjust your sets. One of these putters is definitely going in my bag. The question is which one and of course why? So in this video I am trying out the lab putters. Well I'm going to phrase this another way. I've had the lab putters for about two weeks. I have been trying them out and one of them is in the bag and it came as quite a surprise to me as well. Now I've got two that I'm trying out. I've got the Directed Force 2.1 and the B2 putter. Now you may be thinking and let's face it probably have good reason to think that I've been sipping from the Kool-Aid. But about a month ago when I did my Axis One putting review, so many people requested to see a lab review. Now LAB stands for Lie Angle Balanced. Break in. Oof, wow, rapid. Now as you can see, there's quite a difference between these two putter designs. One of them just looks like a lump of metal, a slightly shaved and crafted lump of metal admittedly on the end of a stick, and the other one looks like Megamind, or an early prop from a Ridley Scott Alien film. However, in testing, oh, do it for me, do it for me, do it for me, do it for me. They've been going very well. If you are new to this channel as well and you do like these reviews and you like what's going on here, please consider hitting, please consider hitting that subscribe button, give the like button a massive wallop as well. And if you do, there's a chance that my voice might break by the time I'm 40. So I got these putters through and quite frankly, as you probably thought when you saw them was, oh, ugh. however, I've got them through. So I want to give them a thorough test out and I want to give them a chance. So I played in a golf day at Carlisle Golf Club. I didn't film any of it. I wanted, and this is going to sound absolutely crazy, just a normal round of golf without any filming. It was, uh, it was different, I know. And for the first eight holes, I thought, <laughs> I really shouldn't have brought this out. It wasn't working. Didn't like the look of it and thought, oh no. But then on the eighth hole, I hold the third, 30 foot snake from the back of the green and thought okay not bad next hole hold a 30 foot eagle putt okay next hole hold a great 10 foot for par next hole nice 15 foot for birdie nice 12 foot for birdie good par save from five feet good birdie from six foot and then close with three pars one of which was a great par save from about 12 foot and the other two lipped out and all of a sudden I was like, well, maybe, maybe there's something to this. Whilst I have you here as well, get down into those comments below. Let me know what putter you are currently using. And if, after you've watched this video, you will consider switching to this type of putter. Because what I'm gonna do is take you away from the beautiful golf course here to explain the science behind these putters. Because I think it is worth just taking that little bit of time to try and understand kind of what is going on here because let's face it me holding puts it's pretty awesome man so i mentioned a moment ago this axis one putter now this is a torque free putter not talking as i am to you but talking as in twisting or resistance to twisting carly's helping with the recording by the way <laughs> Don't know what she's walked into here. So the Axis One putter is basically designed to go straight back, straight through, and not arc and twist within the stroke. And lap putters are designed to do the same thing. So it's that straight back, straight through, it's that resistance to twisting that they're after. Now, if you're a little bit skeptical about this, I think you should be. The vast majority are using the kind of putters that Axis and lab putters would call unstable. Now, they've also sent me through a tool to basically show this. So it's this thing. So if I take this B2 putter, the end, oh, don't scratch it, end of the grip in the end of the attachment and stick the shaft in this little hold thing here. Now, as you can see, it kind of spins freely. The mat shaft is actually causing a little bit of friction there. But it spins freely as so. Now, if I was to put it on the ground like this, get it balanced, and then use this device to move the putter back and through, you can see how the putter face is staying stable. Now, if I was to switch this for another putter, so I've got my old spider here. Ow. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. I felt that. <laughs> oh, right in the shin. So you can see I've got this putter set up in the same way and I'll start my stroke and you can see it automatically starts to twist and go offline. So if I do this with the axis putter as well, down it goes, get it in position, lift it, start stroking and you can see no twisting that resistance to torque. Being honest about it, I can move it into position there and I can hold it in position with the lightest of pressures on my thumb here. 
So while we're saying that the lab putters and the axis putters, yes, they're probably more capable of reducing the amount of torque or getting rid of it altogether, I can also reduce the amount of torque by just applying a tiny little bit of thumb pressure. So to solve this problem of torque, that's where lab get their name from, so light angle balance. Now lab are based in the US, I'm based in a very rainy Manchester, so I needed to do an online fitting, which in itself was pretty interesting. So I sent a video through me using my current putter, so the Scotty, against a straight walled surface, gave them the length of the putter and the engineer sorted out the putter bill from there. So I did a couple of upgrades as well. So I got the stability tour shaft within the directed force and then I got the LA golf shaft in the B2. Now I must admit I found that whole fitting process and actually going through online pretty interesting. I've certainly never done anything quite like that online before. And let's talk through some of the big positives that I like about these putters before we address the massive elephant in the room. So the B2 and the Directed Force 2.1, they both have quite an unusual grip. So we'll get some close-ups so you might be able to tell from here, but the grip is actually angled more to the left. It promotes a preset forward press. So the forward press are when the hands go more towards the target. Now the B2 is a bit, <laughs> it's a bit strange because it is just like a block on the end of a stick. A little bit too minimal, I think, for most people. I mean, the feel is great, the roll is great, but I'm not sure most people are going to want to go for this one. Now, the rain is starting to come down, so I'll get through the directed force hopefully a little bit quicker. A massive positive about this putter is it's so, so easy to line up. It really is. It's strange the fact that it goes into the middle of the putter head, the shaft, and it is so much of that preset forward press. It is highly unusual. But I think most people have been more comfortable with this type of putter. Ah, and it's hail. It's actually hail. It's hail that is coming down. Oh, there you go. It doesn't miss any condition, any weather. <laughs> I'm going to get one a bit more out of the toe. Ugh, yeah. That's going to go in, isn't it? Ah! I always feel with center shafted putters, especially ones that are this thin, that any strike out of the toe or out of the heel is really going to twist the club face around. I just feel that the MOI, the moment of inertia on these putters, should be and might be really low. So a consistent center strike on this style of putter, I think is going to be very much needed. We're on the directed force, there's more mass, and also the center shaft is further back in the club head. So again, I'll go center, then toe, then heel. go toe here yeah there's just nowhere near the same amount of deflection it just feels a more stable putter than the b2 the size of that oh my word it's massive but it is so easy to line up you know, this was the version that I went for as well. So there's different designs that you can have on the back of the putter. I just went for that one straight line. Just experimenting with some different balls here to see how the alignment changes. Uh, it's all pretty easy with all of them, really. So yeah, very, very impressed with everything so far, but there is, as mentioned, an elephant in this particular room. Let's go explain what that is. Now, one of the major problems that people are gonna have with this putter, and one which is, is pretty tough to justify in many respects. My version of the Directed Force 2.1 costs 600 and $85. For the version of the B2 that I got through, that was $695. So both the putters that I had through, I upgraded on the shaft options, which added about $200 to the cost of the putter. But as I was going through the online fitting, it was like, well, you know, when in Rome. Now for that type of cash, you can buy 50 boxes of Ferrero Rocher. I mean, that's a lot of dinner parties. So with that cost, these putters are not gonna be accessible to so many people. Now, in all fairness, Lab do actually address this on their website. So they say, we know the price in quotation marks. So they go on to say that every putter is built by hand. The Directed Force 2.1 is made from aircraft grade aluminum, or as it's known in the States, aluminum. It's CNC milled and made in the state. I've spoken about this before and I did it with the Axis One putter as well. Cost is relative. So someone watching this might not think twice about spending $700 on a collectible Skywars. Skywars? 
Star Wars figurine. That was always more Star Trek. Whilst I would think that absolute lunacy. And I also believe that this is, you know, very, very expensive. However, as a pro golfer doing all this stuff on YouTube, I'm in an incredibly lucky position to get these clubs through. And whilst it might seem lunacy to replace a Scotty Cameron with one of these putters, my directed force 2.1 with my stability tour shaft and my press grip built to 33 degrees is going in my bag. Now I'm gonna be keeping the Scotty Cameron around because I absolutely love that putter still, but Steve, my mate who invited me up to the Carlisle Golf Day, he said something during the round which it resonated actually, he said, I just looked comfortable with the putter. And that's how I felt. I just felt really comfortable. And I can't say that I've actually felt that comfortable with a putter for, so everyone, just want to say a massive, massive thank you for watching. Make sure you get down into those comments below. Let me know what you think about these lab putters, if you've tried them. Right, okay, best go uh, practice my putting, I guess. Or maybe not, maybe that's the secret. All right, guys, see you soon.